we went over the comps. Now, based on what I showed you, uh, based on those sold, since you are the buyer, what do you think is a fair price for that property? I was thinking based on those comps, I was, I was pretty much right where you are at 250. Um, what would happen if we were to offer, let's say 245 or 240 for it? Well, so here's the truth. The house is listed at 250 and you and I, when we, when we looked at what was going on in the market, we know that the best homes, they're, they're all selling fast, right? And those ones are selling for about 98% list price to sales price ratio. So while we may have a little okay. bit of room to negotiate here, I think that if you really want this property, we want to put our best foot forward. Now, I did go ahead and I called the listing agent just to see what was going on to see if we were up against anything. They had five other showings today, and she said that they think they might be getting an offer. They haven't gotten anything yet. Okay, so then let's go with the two, 250. I think that that's a really good idea. Here's the deal, Candy. You wouldn't want to miss out on this house for $5,000, would you? Not really. Not really. I didn't think so. And in the big scheme of things, like five grand is not that much. Right. All right. So you do intend to occupy the property. So I've checked that box. Yes. Now, this particular, um, this particular listing, they are asking for $3,000 in earnest money. So what is earnest money? This is the money that we put up front to let the seller know that we're serious. It's okay. going to go into an escrow account. Escrow is a third neutral party. And their job isn't to negotiate the contract or interpret the contract. It's basically just to do what we say and to truly be a third neutral party. They only will do what all parties agree to. Now, $3,000, we put that up front, like I said, to let the seller know, hey, we've got some skin in the game. And outside of all the many reasons that we get to back out, and I'll go through that in the contract, if for whatever reason we cancel and we leave the seller high and dry, they potentially could come after our earnest money. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Would broker candy add anything there? Um, broker candy would change. No, not not in your speech. Bro broker candy would change the um, what you have typed in here. Okay, so Julie, not broker Julie says, and here's the deal, candy. We're going to request some wiring instructions. So the earnest money is going to be wired, and it's going to be wired within two business days to escrow. What would you say? Okay, um, broker candy is going to say that. What unfortunately, what what the verbiage in here says is to be deposited right above that too. It says deposited within one business day or two business days in if wired. So what I would what I have in my classes um, on the part where you write to be wired, you add to be wired within two business days. Okay. And it doesn't let you just type. Nicely. Just add to it, yeah, within two business yeah. days. Um, Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Now, Candy, oh, looks like we're doing cash. Do you want me to do We are doing contest? cash. That is Perfect. what I talked to you about, and I've decided that that's the way I want to go. Candy, I think that's going to make your offer that much stronger. So yes. because we're doing cash, we're going to skip right down here to where it says the balance of the, whoops, balance of the purchase price. Uh, which is 247,000. So our earnest money of 3,000 plus the balance of 247,000 equals our total purchase price or our total offer price of 250. Do you have any questions on this page? So that's the total amount I'm gonna be paying? That's the total amount you're gonna be paying for the house. Now, remember when we decided on this one, I ran, a I, I ran what's called a cost sheet. So you're going to have some closing costs, which we'll address again. But okay. 250 is the price that you'll be paying for the property. Got it. Okay. I did forget about Any that questions? closing cost thing. So that's okay. It's easy to do. It's nobody loves paying closing costs, but it is a necessary evil. Uh, okay. Any questions on this page? No. So what's going to happen, Candy? I'm going to go through everything with you, and then when I send this to you via AuthentiSign or DocuSign, whatever system my agent happens to be using, you're going to initial at the bottom. All right. Okay. But it'll be all set up for you to go. And okay. I'll walk you through that when we get there. All right, page two. Now we are not doing a new loan, so we don't have to worry about a new loan application. However, if you were, I'm just gonna explain it so anybody who is working with people doing a loan can. All this is saying, Candy, is that in the next three days, we're actually going to go do the loan application. Now, let me ask you this, Candy. Did you already apply for the loan with the lender or was it just a conversation? Um, I'm, I had a conversation over the phone with the lender and he said that he would get things to me when I found a house. Okay, perfect. So just so you guys know, some lenders will take the app right away. Some lenders will have a great conversation. They'll pull credit. They'll look at the tax, the tax income statement or tax returns, and they'll issue a pre-approval on that. 
sometimes they don't do the app until you actually have the house. So this is just saying that the app will be done in the next three days. Appraisal contingency. So Candy, I'm gonna pretend like we're not a cash buyer now so we can talk about this. All right, Candy, so since we're doing a loan, there's a couple of different, I like to call them loopholes that you can use to cancel the contract. So it's gonna almost feel like I'm a little schizophrenic, right? I'm gonna do everything I can to get this property for you, Candy. And then as we go through our time frame, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that if you wanna cancel, you do within our time frame so that we can protect your earnest money. So it's gonna feel a little bit like what happened to Julie? She fought so hard and now she's trying to cancel. I know if we can get through all these time frames and you feel good about it, we made the right choice. Now the appraisal contingency, this is a time frame, and if it's uh, VA or usually I'm gonna put 28 days. So what we're saying here, Candy, is that in the next 28 days, 28 days from acceptance, we're going to pay for the appraisal, the appraiser is going to come out, we're going to get a copy of that report, and if we have anything that we need to negotiate back and forth with the seller, we will have that completed and signed off in writing by both parties by day 28. What does that mean to you? If for whatever reason, Candy, let's say you don't get your credit card to the lender in time or the appraiser drags their feet or if anything comes up, after day 28, if the appraisal comes in and it's not what we need it to be, we can no longer cancel based on that. You're, you're kind of tied in at that point. Does that make sense? Yes, sort of. It's, so, it's a little bit, it's a little confusing. So we do know that in order for you to get this house, it has to appraise for 250,000, right? Okay, got it. So let's pretend for a minute that on day 21, we get the appraisal back and it says that the house appraised for 225. Well, according to the appraisal contingency, we now have seven days to renegotiate with the seller or cancel to protect your earnest money. Okay, very clear, on, got it. If, Perfect. So if on day 27, if they haven't responded to us, I'm going to say, Candy, we're $25,000 apart on the appraisal. I'm not getting a response in writing from the seller. You can choose to move forward, but that means you're paying the difference. Or we can cancel and protect your earnest money. What would you like to do? Beautiful. And I can decide at that time. Okay, perfect. Now the loan contingency. This one's really fun too. What this is saying, Candy, is that we are going to take the next 30 days for you to go through your entire loan process. And after day 30, after that point, if you do not qualify for the loan, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't, but let's pretend that something happened and you didn't, then if you canceled based on that, the seller could keep your earnest money potentially. So this is why it's so important, Candy, that the way your finances look now, they got to stay either the same or get better. What do I mean? No buying a car, don't finance any appliances. Don't go buy a boat for your new RV parking for heaven's sake, Candy, keep it status quo. All right, but after day 30, if for whatever reason we don't qualify for the loan, your earnest money is at risk. So we have 30 days to figure that out. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. Now, just between you and I, if you feel like you're getting a little bit squirrely and we're getting towards the end and you start to get cold feet, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna say, Candy, we're coming up on that loan contingency. How confident are you feeling? And if for whatever reason you're like, I don't know, Julie, I'm, I'm actually starting to have some COVID-19 or whatever's going on, then we can cancel and protect your earnest money. Okay. Cash Thank purchase. You. Yes. Question. Back up in the appraisal contingency. Because I'm paying cash, can I still ask for an appraisal? Absolutely, Candy. Just because you're paying cash doesn't mean that you are, that you aren't you, that you can't get an appraisal. It's completely up to you. It'd be at your expense. It can still be contingent upon that. A lot of times what makes the cash offer attractive is that there isn't an appraisal. However, based on the comps, I don't think that we would have a problem. Great, thank you. Okay. Cool. Did you guys all get that? Just because it's cash doesn't mean that there's no appraisal. If your buyer wants cash, people don't like to pay more than they should either, right? Actually, you'd think that cash people would want an appraisal more than the people getting the loan, really. But. You would think, but that doesn't happen. But I did want to bring that up. Great point. Cash purchase. This, now, Candy, because we are cash and we did our job ahead of time, this says that within one business day, we're going to provide your proof of funds. I went ahead and submit. Well, we'll submit that with the offer. You've already given that to me. Right. Candy, you remember, I don't show property to cash buyers without proof of funds. <laughs> Yes, a really good plan. I like that. Oh, man. Crazy. All right, sale of another property. Now, Candy, I know we talked about this, but I'll ask it for the sake of this class. We don't have to sell another property in order to get the funds 
to purchase the Asoliato property. Is that right? That is correct. Perfect. Now, if we were going to be selling another home in order to collect the funds, the proceeds to go buy this one, we would check this box and then we would add our contingent upon sale addendum, which is a whole nother animal. Now, Candy, this talks about personal property. All right, there were a couple of items that were not, that were on the MLS that are not included in this boilerplate. So as an agent, I read this over and over again, so I know not what to double ask for. Hint, hint, passive aggressive behavior. Candy, we're gonna go ahead and ask for the refrigerator, the washer dryer, and the pool vacuum. Even though it says pool equipment up here, I wanna ask specifically for the vacuum because it's not actually attached. Okay. Any questions on that? No, there was um, there was the 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 backyard, the patio furniture. Okay. Can we ask the, for that? We sure can. We can ask for whatever we want. Okay. Right now, if, if you were going way below list, I would probably dissuade you from that. But I think you're writing a really strong offer, and so if the patio furniture is something you want, let's throw it out there and see what happens. Here's the good news, Candy. As soon as you sign this, I'm gonna call that listing agent. I'm gonna have a conversation with her about our offer so that when she presents it to her seller, uh, she can say that we're communicative. We had the conversation. Here's why we love the patio furniture, so on and so forth. Okay. Now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get really specific. The patio furniture, was that the table in the backyard? That was, yeah, the table and chairs in the backyard. Yes. In backyard with the, did you like the cushions as well? Yes, please. Perfect. So we'll just get really specific about that. And it did have an umbrella. Did you want the umbrella as well? Oh, yes. Okay, perfect. The more specific, better. Now, Candy, what if I just wrote all items per MLS? <laughs> Broker Candy is going to be telling you don't ever, 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 ever do that. The reason is because the MLS printout is not a part of this contract. And the information on it is deemed reliable, but not guaranteed. So if somebody like buyer candy wants the stuff, get very specific. And I'm going to tweak um, what's in here right now by adding the word existing. Washer dryer, just put at the front of the sentence, existing. Um, and you can make that a part of your template if you want to, because we want what we saw. Perfect. That's a good point because, right, we don't want them to take out the stainless steel and put in the apartment size white refrigerator, right? Yep, absolutely. Because, yes, Broker Candy has run into that. Buyer Candy, yeah, yeah, yeah. however, loves these things in this uh, personal property section. Hey, Candy, this was a great property. I'm really excited that we found it. and We're going to do everything we can to get it tied up for you. All right. Title company. Now, Candy, we work with a few different title companies. Do you by any chance have an affiliation or anybody that you'd like to work with? I don't know anybody in the real estate industry at all. Okay, besides perfect. you. So, besides me, well, that's good news. You picked the right realtor. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put Maria Rampa in here with First American. She's done a great job for many of our clients in the past and I know she'll do the same for you. Okay. Close of escrow. Because we're cash, um, I've got us closing in the next, well, two weeks it looks like. Candy, is that all right with you? Did you wanna close that quickly? Um. I would have already I, talked to Candy about this. In that we would have, we would have. And so, yes, we already talked about it and that will be fine with me. Whoops, I'm sorry. Actually, we're past close date. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah put the I got 20th. that. <laughs> now, Candy, this, this particular property actually has a homeowners association. So I'm gonna put on a before three weeks from now, only because the seller has two days to order the documents. The HOA has 10 days to get it to us and the seller has to turn around and get it to you. And then you have five days to approve or disapprove. So this gives us enough time to get the seller's payoff, to get the preliminary title work done, to get the HOA stuff done, and to make sure that we can get all of our ducks in a row without asking for an extension. Make sense? Okay, is there any of that um, paperwork that I can get ahead of time? With regards to what, the HOA stuff? Uh-huh. I feel like this is a leading question, Candy, but not that I'm aware of. The seller's going to order it as soon as we get an accepted okay. offer, and then it, and then the HOA is going to deliver it. Okay. For information, broker candy, okay. CCNRs, rules and regs, any title company that can pull those up for you and send them to you on, in advance. If you've got if you've got a high C client, um, somebody who loves details and wants to get into reading this stuff, CCNRs, rules and regs, um, absolutely, they can get those in advance. Awesome. Um, oh, by the way, I would have, so we go over this in our, in our buyer consultation so that we don't have to necessarily do it this in detail. 
if um, I, and I always ask my people at the beginning, so are you the kind of person that just likes to sign paperwork or would you like me to go over everything? Because some people don't really want to do what we're doing right now and that's okay as long as you ask. And some people want to be everything to be explained to them. So it's always better to know how to explain everything. And then if you don't need to, then you touch on the finer points. So I'm just gonna throw that Broker out Broker Candy like, agrees to that. Perfect. All right, Candy. Now, this is a pretty important time frame. We've already talked about your loan contingency time frame, and we've talked about the appraisal contingency time frame. There are two more time frames that you need to be aware of, and this one right here, the buyer's due diligence, is probably the busiest one for you, the buyer. Now, what the due diligence period is, is we're gonna, we're gonna put 10 days. It's the first 10 days after acceptance where you're gonna go through and you're gonna make sure that this property is the one. We're going to hire a certified home inspector. You're gonna drive by at night. You're gonna verify that you like the school zones. You're gonna check the crime record. You're gonna do everything that you possibly can imagine to make sure that this is the right house for you. And you've got 10 days to do that. Now, I'm gonna jump on the horn and I'm gonna get us a home inspection ordered pretty quickly. Candy, do you have a home inspector that you like or work closely with? I don't know of any. No, your cousin's not a home inspector or your uncle. You don't wanna throw any of that at me? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sometimes I will they're be like someone they're, who's honest. <laughs> okay, cool. Sometimes they want their dad to come inspect. Awesome, Candy. So I want to spend a little bit of time on this because it's pretty important. So we're going to go ahead and order that home inspection. And the way that we typically do it is we'll order it. It takes about two hours for the home inspector to do their full inspection on the property. You and I are going to meet the inspector about, when he has about 30 minutes left in the home inspection. And he's going to give us the rundown on everything that he has found within the property. Now, we're looking for deal breakers, okay? We're looking for health and safety hazards. We're looking for roof leaks, water leaks, mold, cracked slabs, AC units not working. We're looking for major things that, draw, that throw up a red flag. What we're not looking for necessarily, Candy, is the GFI switch. I bet the house you're living in right now has a GFI switch that's not working. So we're looking for deal breakers. Now, after we meet with the home inspector within about 24 hours, he's gonna send us about a 60 page home inspection report. Your job is gonna be to go through that sucker with a fine tooth comb and let me know what you absolutely cannot live without. Now here's the catch. The reason we've gotta get that home inspection done so quickly is because we only have 10 days to order it, get it done, read it over, negotiate with the seller any repairs that we want. After that 10 day time frame. If we haven't negotiated anything, what we've done is we've passed that contingency time frame. So we're, we're buying it the way that it is. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now the home inspection, this one's got a pool. So figure it's gonna be anywhere between five and $700. That's one of those upfront fees that I talked to you about when we first met. Okay. 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 Broker Candy, that was fabulously done. That was the emphasis on deal breakers and what you cannot live without, what absolutely needs to be repaired. This is not the time for picky and cosmetic. So well done. Okay, Thank you. buyer candy. <laughs> All right, buyer candy. So we talked a lot about the home inspection. And again, I'll continue to walk you through this. There's so much information, which is that's why you're working with us. And we'll take it time frame by time frame. But this is the busiest one, the first 10 days, okay? Okay. Uh, it does say here that you can cancel based on the due diligence time frame. We just do that in writing and I'll make sure that you do that within the right time frames to protect your earnest money. And we'll have you initial here that you understand that if we don't negotiate or get things remedied in writing before the end of the due diligence, that you understand that that time frame has passed. Do you have any questions on this page, Candy? Um, real quick on there, um, if we don't, if we don't um, get anything resolved in there and it's waived, does that mean I lose my earnest money? Well, you don't necessarily lose your earnest money because the truth is we've got those two other time frames still, right? We've still got your appraisal contingency and we've still got the loan contingency. So okay. the good news about the good news about working with us, Candy, is that we know where all of your bailout time frames are. The only the only the only think part about it passing is that if there was anything that you wanted repaired, we've that time frame to negotiate that piece has come and gone. Okay, got it. Thank you. So yeah, you we could still protect your earnest money. It would just be with a different contingency time frame. Okay. All right. Now the difference between
between who pays for home inspections, what I've done handy or the inspections, I've gone ahead and I've broken this up. It says here that you're gonna pay for the home inspection and this one did have a pool. So we're gonna have you pay for the pool inspection as well. Okay. If there was a termite, I would put seller there, but you're not a VA, so we're not gonna worry about that. All right. Uh, okay. We are going to put together, like I sort of alluded when we were talking about the home inspections, after we get that home inspection completed and we've got that report, we are going to submit a request for repairs to the seller. That is our negotiation to see what we can get done and rectified before we close escrow. Any, do you have any questions on that process? Because that's probably the, the most confusing of everything that we talk about. No, the, the only question I have is, could I ask the seller to pay for the pool inspection? You certainly could, Candy, but I will tell you that, and I can't say that anything is typically done this way or that this is the way we do it here. However, this is the way that it's typically done. If you want it inspected, it's going to make your offer stronger if you're the one that's actually paying for that inspection. Not to mention, Candy, if I'm just being frank, I think you're going to be a little happier when you get to choose the inspector. You know that you're going to get an inspection that was from truly a third neutral party, and that's what you want, right? That is. Okay. Okay. All right. Good answer. Title, thank you. I've never had anybody ask that, but I love it. Title and escrow fees. This is the way that the, typically things are split up here in the state of Nevada. The buyer and the seller split the escrow fees. You're a cash deal, so there's no lender's policy. If you were not a cash deal, the lender's policy would be paid for by you, the buyer. Guys, I just remember that the lender, the buyer has the lender, so the buyer pays for that policy. That's how I remember it. Um, we we're going to go back to any. The seller pays for the owner's title policy. The seller pays for the Nevada transfer tax. The buyer pays for the appraisal. If I had solar, like a solar transfer fee, I would put that in there. Or like that, uh, the Nora fee. I think it's called the Nora fee. It is Nora. City. Yeah. I would put that there and then establish who's going to pay for that. So I went ahead and split this up the way that things typically are done here in the state of Nevada. Okay. Uh, prorations, Candy, all this says is that when you own the home, you're going to pick up from where they left off. Everything will be prorated. Preliminary title report, uh, with, as soon as we get this deal accepted, we're going to do what's called open escrow and title is going to get to work pulling what's called a preliminary title report. We'll actually give you a copy of that. And if you have any questions on it, I'm going to recommend that you call our escrow officer. It's going to show you lot lines. It's going to show you if there's any liens on the property. Um, they're also going to let us know if there's anything that we should be aware of, but it's for you to look over. And then if you have questions, we should discuss it. Okay. Do you have any questions on this page? No. Awesome. So you'll go ahead and sign down here. Lenders and closing costs. Candy, because we're doing an FHA, remember how we said we were going to ask for closing costs? Me too. See how we've got all kinds of buyers here today. So Candy, this is where this is where we're going to ask for help with the closing costs. Now, sometimes it's confusing because we split the fees up the way that they typically are in the state of Nevada. We want to keep it that way and then take the five thousand and credit it towards those closing costs. Okay. So it would be almost it would be a double dip if we made all of this face seller and then on top of that ask for five thousand dollars. Does that make sense? Got, got it. Yes. Perfect. Now we are asking for the one year home warranty plan candy. I've got Old Republic in here. I provided you with three or four different companies and that was the one you told me you wanted. Is that yes. still true? Yes. Perfect. So we're gonna ask the seller to pay for that. And because this property has a pool, we're gonna put $750 in there. Okay. Okay, upon close of escrow, seller agrees to transfer clear title. And I wanna spend some time on the common interest community formerly known as homeowners associations or HOA. So it's CIC, HOA, they're one and the same. Okay. All right. So what this is saying is that there's some law, state laws that actually um, dictate how we handle HOAs. So all this is saying is that once we've got an accepted offer, the seller has two days to order that HOA package. It's called a resale package. The HOA has 10 days to deliver that back to the seller. The seller's okay. agent then has to turn around and give it to us. Okay, once I receive it, you have five days to approve or disapprove in writing. Okay. Now, time out for just time out for just a minute. Okay. I want you to say that again because the way you said that was great, and I just want everybody else to hear exactly what you said about when you receive it. My time starts. Okay. So, Candy, there's some rules around the HOA. By the way, because we're buying in an HOA, this is our fourth contingency time frame by the way. 
And I, I want you to know as your buyer's agent, I'm not gonna push them to, to follow this because this could be our last loophole, but here's what we should expect. The day that it gets accepted, the seller has two days to order the resale package from the homeowners association legally. The HOA then has 10 days to turn around and get that back to the seller. That seller's agent's gotta get that to me. And from the day that I get it, you have five days to approve or disapprove in writing. So okay. it's not from when you get it, Candy. So if I take, if I get the package on Monday and I don't give it to you till Friday, you've got one day to approve the package. But you won't do that. Candy, I wouldn't do that. Are you kidding? I've built a career on not doing silly things like that. That's why okay. people used to work with me. Now, here's the deal, Candy. If for whatever reason, the seller's dragging their feet and you might be getting cold feet as well. After day 15, if we have not received the HOA documents, we can cancel the contract and protect your earnest money. Okay. Can you see why I'm not, as the buyer's agent, I'm not gonna push too hard for them to get that because I wanna make sure that you feel comfortable moving forward. Now, okay. as we get closer to the close, I will push a little harder because there are things that we need from that package in order to facilitate the close. Okay. All right. Sometimes this is where the buyer will say, well, aren't you going to read it? Aren't you going to tell me what it says? Absolutely not, Candy. I'm not moving into the property. And quite frankly, most of these packages are several hundred pages long. Could you imagine if we read those for everybody? Aye, aye, aye. You'd have to pay me more. And you're already paying me top dollar. <laughs> no, the truth is, though, I'm not really sure about the intricacies of your lifestyle. And so I literally, Candy, I had a buyer who was buying a condo and it had, he was buying the specific condo because it fit his price range and it had a one car garage. Well, come to find out in reading the HOA doc, which he did, you could not store any sort of outdoor equipment in the garage. So he could not store his canoes in the one car garage. Now, had I have read that as his agent, I didn't even know he liked a canoe, right? Could you imagine if I would have said, yeah, everything looks good and he closed and the whole point of buying that house or that condo with the one car garage was totally negated. That would have been a mess. Let me tell you what, it would have been a mess. It was on Aspen Peak Loop. Don't let it happen. All right, continuing on. Now, Candy, there's a few different disclosures that you as the buyer, we need to ask for, okay? Some of these are state mandated. Some of these are federal. And some of these are gonna be specific to my office. Now, as far as it is concerned from the seller, we do need that seller real property disclosure form. It's a five page disclosure. They're gonna let us know everything that they know about the property. And because this home was built in 1972, it's actually a federal form. We're gonna require that they submit the lead-based paint disclosure. And then by the way, as the buyer's agent, if there was anything else that my broker required, which she doesn't, like my special Keller Williams seller disclosure, I would have to put that in there. If I don't ask the seller to just Give it to me here. I can't require it later. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Time out. <clears throat> Just for everybody else here. If we're if we're seeing a property in 1972, Julie would have already had me sign the lead-based paint pamphlet, which is which she is required to give me by federal law, and which carries a minimum fifty five zero thousand dollar fine. So she would have given that to me already, which is a reason we don't need to put it in here, but I wanted to go off script and let everybody know if you're looking at old property, you get that, that buyer, that pamphlet as soon as possible. Okay. You guys remember that from good old fashioned real estate school, right? 1978, woo woo. Only thing we remember from real estate school. Candy, do you have any questions on this page? I do not. Perfect. Let's, I'm gonna have you initial here when it comes into your inbox. Okay. Candy, Federal Fair Housing just says we're not gonna discriminate. Now, right before we close escrow, uh, roughly three to five days before close, you and I are gonna do what's called the final walkthrough. And my broker requires a very detailed form. It's gonna take 15 to 20 minutes and all we're gonna do is meet at the property and we're gonna make sure that the house is number one in the same condition as when we first saw it, that nobody trashed the place, the appliances are the same, and if we did get any repairs requested that those repairs were made. Any questions on that? No. Cool, by the way, I'll remind you of this. It's not the time to decide you don't love that purple wall and that amazing fish mural that they painted. Okay. Cool, um, all right, Candy. Okay, I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw you a curveball right here. Okay. Only because I just had the email this morning. Broker Candy had the email this morning on this. So, um, so we do that walkthrough, let's say three days prior to close of escrow. 
and something happens to the property. Um, it blows up or somebody breaks in and ruins some stuff. Am I still stuck with this house? Well, that's, so that's two different scenarios. If the house burns down, there is a risk of loss here that says if the house burns down, you're not bound to the contract. Something that we may want to do, if that's a big concern for you, Candy, we can do what's called a double final walkthrough, and I'm happy to do that. So the first one we would do the day that the CD is issued or the closing disclosure, which comes from your lender. So the day that that's issued, you and I are going to go walk through the house. That's usually about three days before close of escrow. If there's anything wonky going on there, we need to know sooner rather than later so that if we're going to make financial adjustments, we can do that on the CD. And then what we'll do is the day that you sign, which will be three days later, right after you sign your docs, we'll run right back over to the house and we'll do one more walkthrough. And then we should record that afternoon. Would that make you feel comfortable? Yes, that would. Thank you so much. Okay, Candy, broker Candy, was that all right? Off script, yes, except that that risk of loss um, is not just for fires. All it says is, is that if in any, any way material, um, the material part of the property has been has been damaged, mm -hmm. then I don't have to buy it. So in other words, catch, people come in you gotta and you got to catch it before it records. Well, you do, but that yeah. but that but that paragraph that you that you saw and by the way, really good um, at that. That paragraph is not simply for if it's fire. If okay. people have come in and damaged it and broken stuff, I also don't have to buy it. Cool. That's okay. a good, great question. All right, you guys. So delivery of possession, Candy, we've got close of escrow in here. So what that means is that when we get final confirmation that we've recorded, I'll be able to hand you the keys. Now, Candy, what part of the country are you from? Um, I, I came from back east. You came from back east. Is that a, are you from an attorney state where you do this with attorneys? Yes, we use them. Okay, so it's a little different out here in Nevada. We're actually an escrow state. So I just want to set the table, no pun intended, because <laughs> what won't happen is what happens back where you're from. So back east in a lot of states, they do where everybody signs their documents together, and then you actually get the keys right then and there. It's yes. not like that in Nevada. So I don't okay. want you to be, I don't want you to get that icky feeling like, hey, where are my keys? You won't get them right when you sign. As a matter of fact, it'll either be later that evening, potentially the next day, just depending on when the loan is funded and when it gets recorded officially at the recorder's office. But I'll be, I'll be there with you, walking you through that process. Any questions okay. on that? Beautiful. Um, I do want not. to do that. Broker okay. Candy is going to recommend to anybody um, in your first meeting, ask them where they're from. Um, and if they are from back East, make sure you say that at least five times prior to writing this offer. This offer be the fifth time you say that to them so that they're really know they're not going to give a check and get their keys. Okay. Yeah, they can get really, really upset with you. And it stinks when you when you've been working with someone for four months only for them to question everything about you the last literally like the, In last the very last second. The yes. Yeah. And have broker candy get a call saying you've never done this for them and you've never done that for them and you never call. It's not fun. So just make sure. Okay. All right, broker candy. I mean, buyer candy assignment of this agreement. We're not doing an and or assignees on this particular contract. However, if we were, we would, we'd have, everybody would have to agree to it. And if they were, I would explain it, but nobody ever does that. That would be like if I was buying it, if Candy was my sister and I was buying Julie Youngblood and or a signee and then because Candy was overseas in the military and she was coming back in a week and a half, but I knew this was the one and then I assigned the contract to Candy. It's a long, it involves a lot of stuff. All right, Candy, let's talk about cancellation. Okay. Now I want to be really clear. Like I said earlier, I am not an attorney. And so it's funny, right? I'm going over this contract with you though. Only attorneys and lawyers can interpret contracts. My job is to fill in the blanks and hope you hope that you understand it. Again, if you're uncomfortable with any of this, I'm going to recommend that you do speak with an attorney. Okay. Now, oh, that wasn't okay. I thought that was a timeout moment. All right, perfect. So your earnest money is what's on the line if you cancel outside of any of those loopholes. Okay, I am going to go about. back then. Um, okay. On the cancellation, okay. Um, in there, it says that I will not be reimbursed for the cost of my inspection as the buyer nor for the appra any appraisal. Uh, make sure that you let me know that. 
Okay. Just in case. So Candy, I just want you to be aware that there are some risks that you assume when you purchase a property. For example, you're going to pay for an appraisal, you're going to pay for a home inspection, you've got some out-of-pocket expenses, and if for whatever reason this deal falls apart, you're not going to be reimbursed for those expenses. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. Perfect. Now, default. Is this the... I don't think the association is doing... It's coming out of the newest one. Okay. And they don't right. do, they've already stopped doing mediations. So it's in there right now. So it's I'll, in there I'll right present now. it. Go All right, Katie. But I think it's one of the best perks of actually working with a realtor. They're taking it out, which kind of thinks mediation. All this says, Candy, is that if for whatever reason you and the seller decide you want to fight it out, you agree to try to work it out before you sue the pants off of each other. Do you have any questions regarding that? No. Perfect. So you're going to initial here. Now, if the seller defaults, let's if this is the one, Candy, and the seller defaults, you can actually sue the seller for what's called specific performance. I'm going to recommend that we really, let's just go find something else. These things happen, though, not very often. If for whatever reason, Candy, you default and it's outside of any one of those reasons that you really are allowed to default, I want you to know that your earnest money is at risk. All parties will have to agree with what happens to that earnest money, but I want you to know it's just because you cancel doesn't mean that earnest money is getting credited right back to you. There'll be a little bit of a conversation, maybe a fight. Any questions on that? No. Perfect. So go ahead and initial there. Okay. Candy, escrow is a third neutral party, okay? So they'll only agree to do it with the money and everything else with what we tell them to do, what both parties agree to in writing, which is actually a really good thing. That means the seller can't call and say, hey, give me the earnest money, and they just send it to them. It actually makes me feel pretty warm and fuzzy. Escrow nice. just also wants us to know that, they, uh, that they're not going to be held reliable for anything or liable for anything. They're not liable for anything. They're fairly reliable, but not necessarily liable for anything. Okay. Unclaimed funds, if for whatever reason, and I don't know why you would, I've seen it happen though. If for whatever reason you wire your money in and they don't need to use it all and you don't go pick up the rest, they're going to start to charge you interest on that money that they're borrowing from you. So just well, that'll encourage me to go pick up the rest. That's for sure. It's crazy. I've seen it happen. Now, Candy, when you and I first met, we signed an agreement that said that we were going to, you were going to compensate me for my services. This just says that what we agreed upon still stands and that you are paying me an additional commission. Okay. Waiver of claims. I call this the stupid realtor clause. And forgive me for saying that. This basically just says that I'm not an attorney and that anything that I've said, you can't hold against me. I'm not a home inspector. I'm not a lender. I'm not an attorney. I'm not, oh, I'm just a realtor. Do you have any questions on that? No, I will. I, I, I did read this. Go ahead. Oh, you did. Okay, perfect. And then definitions, Candy, there are lots of things that we say in real estate every single day. As a matter of fact, my husband and I, we sell homes every day. I know that you only buy a home once every roughly seven to 10 years. And so this is just that, like a glossary of terms, a breakdown of all of the things that we have said, and we will continue to say over and over again. Although you don't have to refer back to this, I'm happy to answer for you. Signature okay. delivery and notices. Candy, this just says that you can do digital signatures, the time that things are received, that actually starts the clock, or when things are emailed, that starts the clock. We can do wet signatures, digital signatures. Signatures can be on five different documents as long as when we put them all together, it equals one document. Any questions on signatures? No. Perfect. 1031 exchange candy. I'll pretend like you're doing a 1031 exchange. We're just gonna let the seller know that you are participating in a tax deferred 1031 exchange. So Candy, you sold an investment property and in order to not pay taxes on your proceeds, you've agreed to invest those funds into like property, another investment property. So you are now deferring your taxes. How exciting is that? That's, that, why, that's, we love it. that's why we love investors. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you're in contact with uh, the person who's holding my money, right? Yes, we've been talking to Betty Kincaid down at 1031 Exchange. I think it's, I don't know what her company's called. Um, and we've also made sure that I've talked to Maria. They know how to facilitate the 1031, so you're going to be protected. Okay. All other essential terms. Candy, time is of the essence. Everything must be reduced to writing. In other words, if you go cruise by the house and you see the seller outside and you guys negotiate that they're going to paint the house pink because that's what you want, I can't enforce that unless it's in writing. This is a legally binding contract. You will hear me say that over and over again. We don't have any additional addendums to attach, nor do we have any additional terms. So I'm going to okay. write NA in there. Okay. Candy, this is where we're going to fill in our information. So legally, I have to disclose who represents who. Here's my broker. Here's my company. Here's my name, my license number. Candy, you're not licensed in Nevada or any other state? No. 
correct. And I am not a principal to the transaction. Now, Candy, it is Monday at 1.45. So here's the dealio. I'm going to give these guys and gals until June 10th at 5 p.m. to get back to us. What that means is I'm going to submit this offer today as soon as you sign it. And then you won't hear from me until Wednesday at 5 p.m. Now, if I hear something sooner, I'll let you know. But we're going to give them a day and a half to get back to us. Does that sound good? Okay. In other words, Candy, don't call me every five minutes and ask if I've heard anything. I haven't. <laughs> okay. Now, now that you've given me what for on that, I promise I will not call you every five minutes. <laughs> okay, Candy. Usually I don't say that out loud, but you seem like a fool. <laughs> Candy, this is where you're going to sign your offer and then you're going to initial again. And this is where we're going to, oh, it looks like Ezekiel Chandler. This is where we're going to talk about who the listing agent is. So Candy Doyle with Keller Williams Realty. Here's our listing agent, Mr. Chandler. Um, the seller's going to disclose whether they do or do not have a disclose, an interest in the property as far as being a real estate agent. I looked on the MLS. It said no. Sometimes that's wrong. FERPTA, Foreign Investment Real Estate Act. I never, I never remember what FERPTA stands for. Um, I did look at the MLS. It said that no, they were not subject to FERPTA. However, they're going to fill this in and they're going to let us know if they accept, counter, or reject. Okay. This is where the seller is going to sign. And before they do that, we're going to initial here at the bottom. Now, Candy, if it comes back that this seller is a foreign investor, I'm going to recommend that we do a little extra digging and I'm going to want to make sure that you understand the potential repercussions for you with regards to that. Okay. And that will be during that first, that first bailout period. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, just to put, it's probably not the case here, but if for whatever reason, this was a foreign investor, then what needs to happen is the title company and a CPA, they all need to work together with the seller to withhold the proper tax amount. And if that doesn't get done, you're actually liable as the new owner for the taxes. Well, I don't like person. that. Yes. Um, then yes, please. Um, for the extra work you're going to do. Yeah. I don't like it either. And that's why it's important that you work with people who know what they're doing. So Candy, any questions on the offer? I do not have any. Um, if I do, when I get this, cause I'll probably just gla glance through it again when I'm signing. And if I do, I can just shoot you an email. Yes, please. An email, a text, a phone call, whatever works best for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Great. And so, and then you're just going to uh, put my stuff and send it to me, right? Oh, do you want me to do that? No. I can do it if you want. No, you just, because you did all of the other stuff, so you can put my stuff, um, because you went through it, I think everybody would know, knows how to go into whatever add the signatures program and, yeah. and add the signatures um, where they're doing it. And you all saw that she could change it depending on what I wanted, if I wanted to add the furniture, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can go over this. Um, it is very, uh, it's big protection for you um, to go over this with her. Um, any questions for Julie while she is still here? We've got no questions. You did that that well, or you confused I, them that badly, huh? I don't know. I either nailed it or I bored <laughs> everybody to tear. Everybody's in a boredom coma. <laughs> no, Shane is so excited. He's here twice. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Shane, impressive. Dog threw up. Joys of working from home. I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Well, I know your floor plan, Shane, and I think it's a pretty nice home to work home from. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Julie? No. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for me in terms of the contract itself? Any of the things? Julie nailed it and this is being videoed so you can view this over and over and the way she talked about the things and giving those. Remember that when you're showing property, you're setting this stuff up so that you, you can go through it faster. That was the assumption when she was going through this fast, that we have had these conversations while showing property. Um, she's, she's talking to me about the HOA paperwork when we're seeing property with an HOA. She's talking to me about um, pre-1978 lead-based paint stuff because we're seeing property with that. So if there's anything like that, that's the time when you get to have that conversation and then you get to repeat it through the, through the contract itself. 
Yeah, I find that we, we go over the contract at our consultation because first off, it sets us apart. Nobody else is really doing that. And it just lets them know that because we know the contract so well, when you go over the contract, you can highlight all of the potential pitfalls which means you can also highlight how you're a safety net. And that's why it's important that they choose you. So knowing that, your contract- That's a great is, selling point in a consultation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. I, I think it's why we get to work with as many people as we do, because we really do take the time to know what the heck we're making people sign. Which for those of you who don't yet know a lot about the, the contract or don't, uh, are not familiar with the words between the blanks, a really good idea to get familiar with the words between the blanks okay any questions any questions at all um lily Debbie and julie um i had on page five now this might be old and I, or i'm written it down wrong uh where it says the dc related uh expensive expenses uh full contribution and transfer fee but I saw on Julie's is seller. Julie put the Julie put the seller on there. Um, they are they. It's one of those things that, as with the other items, the mm -hmm. buyer is is customarily the person who pays for it. But it's always negotiable. She did okay. have the seller on there, and I noticed that. And it's fine. It's just one of those mm -hmm. that you need to know that if your buyer asks for it, you make sure you let them know. Yes, we absolutely can, and yes, it weakens your offer. Awesome. Thank you. Wait on the on the HOA stuff. No, no it was in the it was in the. Um, uh, it's a uh, page five on the CIC related expenses for yeah on the CIC capital. related. Transfer to oh, the the, yeah. the HOA transfer fee. Mm -hmm. You had the oh, seller well, to pay I, that. I always have the seller pay it. Okay. I mean, I've always asked. If it was a sticking point, there's a couple of big ones that are good sticking points, like transfer tax. Right, that's a really yeah. good one because it's five dollars and ten cents per thousand of sales price. So if you wanted to finagle some numbers. You could, but you're also hoping that the agent presenting the offer is doing a net sheet so that they can see the value in your in finagling those things. Otherwise, right. depending on who you're dealing with, it might just make more sense to make a different offer. And it is yeah, always if, negotiable. If that makes sense. Like I, I've had offers come through and I'm like, ooh, I wonder if they know that they put the buyer is paying the entire transfer tax. I'm not gonna fight it. Not at all. And then they come back and go, oh, wait, we marked that wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. well, education opportunity in there. Okay, any other questions? Then I think we're just going to be, uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to make you guys sit around here simply because the class is scheduled um, that long. Perfect. Oh, Michael. Where we can watch it again? On YouTube or... Pardon? Where we can Where work. Uh, oh, I think it's, it's going, going to be, be kwlvtraining.com is, okay. is the YouTube channel. And the question of when it's going to be uploaded to that, shoot Cassie an email because Cassie is the one who, um, who uh, puts them up there. Okay. You know, the MCA. So if you shoot a tour, you may go, this, this class may scoot to the front of the line for going up onto that channel. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Otherwise, I we're all going to be free for the afternoon. Julie. I just want to say, I just want to say kudos to Shane for always coming to these classes. I know he's been selling real estate for a while, and I think it's a testament to his I want to learn. Um, there's a lot of people that have been doing it longer than you that would never dream of coming to something like this. So, or Thanks. even shorter or less time than you that wouldn't come to this because they think they've got it all figured out. So, yeah, Kudos, oh. Shane, Beal Estate. That's it. I will. I will second that. But I've already told Shane that several times over um, because he does come to the classes. He is education oriented, um, and that is why he quickly became a superstar. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, I'll see you around the office. And thank you guys thank you. for being here. Bye. Bye. Thank you.